I got drawn into Chicago Opera Theater by the biggest drawer of them all, Alan Stone. What drew me to him and his ideas was his daring, his vision, his utter disregard for practicality. This company could never have been started at all if it hadn't been for somebody who was really without fear, uh, without any kind of sense of the impossible. He knew opera and he knew his stuff and he, he knew all the traditions and he, he knew what to look for when it came to new pieces and that's why I ended up doing The Mother of Us All here and I did uh, Summer and Smoke here and met my first living composers and um, because Alan knew that these things were worthy and they needed to be done and, uh, and done in Chicago. My favorite moment of all was the moment during a dress rehearsal of that first mother. Virgil Thompson, whose hearing was much impaired, leaned over to me and said very loud, my dear, I've seen 125 productions of this opera. This is the first time anybody got it. Alan was smart enough to find directors who understood theater. I think he rather followed the, the philosophy that the difficult, you do it once, the impossible takes a little longer. And Alan, I'm sure, believed that. And he did the impossible. And it didn't take him really very long to establish an extraordinary place for C.A.T. in opera in the city. Chicago Opera Theater has never been content to do the same old, same old. None of the productions I've done here in uh, Chicago Opera Theatre have been uh, sort of predictable. Uh, certainly none of them have been dull or boring. I think that the work that Chicago Opera Theatre has been doing in the last few years, especially I have to say under, under the tutelage and, and inspiration of Brian Dickey, uh, has been remarkable. Some very interesting productions, uh, some repertoire that hasn't been seen before. It had always been the part of the history of, of CAT, particularly to cover 20th century repertoire, contemporary repertoire. It, it really made this fantastic, not just re reputation in Chicago, but national reputation, indeed international reputation. Last fall, I was in New York for the Opera News Awards and had occasion to talk with um, F. Paul Dr Driscoll, John Adams, Cheryl Milnes, three people who are incredibly important for very different reasons in the opera world. And for the first time I was able to introduce myself as a board member of COT. Each and every time I was greeted with, I love that company. That warmth, that admiration is entirely attributable to Brian Dickey. Brian, and in a way, has the best nose in the business. I, I just think he's, he has such knowledge of what's going on in the opera business and who's doing it. And that's not just, you know, the big names, but it's the small names. And he knows who's coming up where and who's doing what where. I always admired his talent for spotting young artists, many of whom uh, have gone on to really great careers. I think a small theatre, a small company such as ours, devoting as we do an, an inordinate amount of time to careful musical preparation and re re rehearsal generally, has provided opportunities for young singers, the like of which they rarely encounter anywhere. And this is what Alan believed in very much indeed. It's what I believe in enormously, and I've devoted my whole career to this whole question of identifying and developing young singers. So it's be, really been an extremely good fit, I would say. News, 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 news. That is it from Tadius, short for Tadius.
I'm thrilled by what we have achieved and the recognition that we've, 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 we've got from those achievements. Thank you.